Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the review of Cana Bridge of Spirits. Hope you guys are having a great day. Hope this video finds you well. Uh, we're going to talk about Cana Bridge of Spirits from a couple of different angles. We're going to talk about it from a disabled gamer's perspective, plus, obviously, uh, right, you know, just gaming in general. Uh, normally, these two opinions don't affect my reviews, but in this particular case with Cana Bridge of Spirits, it will. We'll talk about it from a regular gaming perspective, the controls, the graphics, the story, a little bit of the story. Uh, and all of this is pre, uh, pre-recorded and obviously gameplay from the early part of the game. So no spoilers, no no nothing like that that are that are huge. Uh, if you're interested, you can get this game on PS4 and PS5 at uh, the PlayStation Store for forty dollars uh, or thirty nine ninety nine. Um, it's considered a budget title, but I gotta say. Uh, as you can tell on the screen, it's a gorgeous game to look at. It's a gorgeous game to play. The environment is very colorful, very bright. Kind of reminds me of a Pixar movie. Reminded my wife of um, Kingdom Hearts, the Kingdom Hearts series from the standpoint of the graphics as well as uh, some of the movesets. But we'll get into that in just a moment. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about it. Kana, uh, Kana is a spirit guide that brings the uh, uh, wayward spirits to their next uh helps them move on basically uh at, from from where they are on the earthly plane lets them be able to let go of whatever it is it's holding them here and and moves them on kana is responsible for going through this mysterious land which we know nothing about she's traveled here um and we know nothing about it except that all of the uh inhabitants of this land are or at least most of them are are all gone are all dead and we have no idea why we really don't even know a lot about Kana. You just basically dropped into a uh, world and said go, you know, and, and and you kind of find out about Kana through various cutscenes or little you know snippets that she says as you travel, uh, and the story is done the same way. You don't really know why you're here, um, but as you go along and as you explore uh, the different areas of the map. Uh, the story is kind of unfolded for you in cutscenes and in different things that you do. There are a lot of things to do in Cana Bridge of Spirits. It's, it's what's known as a linear open world, where so you'll go into one area and there'll be a bunch of stuff uh, that you can explore and uh, pick up and, and do. Um, and then you'll be moved to another objective and the same thing. Uh, another part of the world opens up and you can explore it and then you go on to the next objective and so on. Um, but the the whole premise of this game is uh, being uh, a spirit guide on this quest. And you have different abilities thanks to your staff uh, and these wonderful little guys that follow you around called the Rot. The Rot are these little magical creatures that help you um, basically clear the corruption of the land and make the land whole again. Um, these little guys are, are funny uh, in that just their regular design is really neat. They're just uh, guys with little flowers or whatever on their head. But you can, as you can see on the screen, you can basically uh, find these little carts throughout the land and buy cosmetic things like birthday cake hats or birthday party hats or uh, any number of things uh, to put on their heads and like mushrooms and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. Um, on the PS5, the number of rot that follow you on the screen Actually, you can have up to 100 rot following you at any given time on PS5. Um, there are 100 rot to find throughout the world, and they, again, will help you uh, fight enemies and things like that. On PS4, uh, the number of rot that appear on the screen is limited, of course, due to hardware. So you'll see them, but you won't see the entire 100 rot army that you have amassed on screen at the same time. It just won't happen. Um, again, I recorded this on a... 1080p display or I do not have a 4k TV but this is on PS5 what you're seeing here and it's absolutely gorgeous uh, there's not a single time where I ran into frame drops uh, or graphical glitches of any kind um, there have been several patches since I was playing to help with um, a couple of uh, things like the final boss battle uh, was kind of rebalanced a little bit uh, there were a couple of graphical error errors reported by a few people that have been uh, fixed with a couple of patches. I, I ran into none of that as I was playing. Um, I gotta say, 
it was pretty cool. Uh, let's talk about the enemies and the combat and the the uh, like mini boss battles that you have going throughout the game. Um, my wife said that this reminded her of a PS or, or rather of a Kingdom Hearts game. Her move set reminds me of that. The enemy types that you fight uh, do kind of remind me of that. Um, however, there are a few differences. You do at some point get your your uh, staff becomes a bow at some point. You have uh, a scanning uh, a scan button where uh, it alerts you to different things throughout the world. That same scan button turns into a shield for blocking. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that move set, but it's done in a way to where the combat does feel unique. And when you first start out, you think it's really, really simple, and it's really, really um, just a simplistic combat system, which is true to a point. But as you progress, um, there is a small skill tree, and you unlock different abilities like uh, a a uh, one of your one of your abilities you can unlock is a bow uh, that allows you to shoot multiple arrows at one time thanks to the rot. It's basically a rot infused bow, and you and you shoot out multiple arrows at one time. Uh, your staff has an explosive. Uh, I don't know if they call it something to do with a hammer. I can't remember exactly, but it basically starts glowing and then has an area of effect. Uh, the rot uh, evolves as you go along to help you um, navigate obstacles and puzzles and, and things like that. Um, and it's really kind of a unique way because way that they did it because you can actually use the rot in combat. You can use the rot uh, as uh, as um, puzzle solutions. You can use the rot for just different things, and that adds a, a different, whole nother um, dynamic to the combat and the movement system, and the way the puzzles work. There are a lot of puzzles in this game, so if puzzles are not your thing, um, I'm sorry, but that's how it's going to work. Uh, it, there are a lot of puzzles. A ton of puzzles. Um, but overall, guys, this game is just a, a joy to play. When I sat down to play it, um, I I was in I was engaged in the in the world uh, from the standpoint of how beautiful it looked. The com you know once you start evolving the rod and evolving your skill tree, the combat kind of grabbed me a little bit, and the story unfolds in a nice pace. So. Uh, it, it kept me engaged, which is what I need, you know, as a gamer who's, you know, old at this point in time by gaming standards. I need something to grab me and keep me, and it, it did a good job of doing that. So, overall, with the boss fight and the story, the boss fights and the story and the, and the rot and the different things, I would give this game, uh, from the music to the graphics to everything... An overall rating of probably a 8 uh, out of 10. But now we need to talk about if you're a disabled gamer. Because there are a few things in this game that I really wish they would have not... Or, or would have done better. Um, there is no real uh, waypoint system in this game. Uh, you cannot mark things on your map. So you basically have to look at your map... Kind of get an idea where you're going. Uh, if you get lost, you look at your map again. Um, there's no waypoint system. Uh, in combat, there's supposed to be a lock-on system uh, that's done by the uh, R3 button or pushing down your right. There's a lock-on system where you push your, your R3 button or the push down the right stick that's supposed to work when you're in combat. Um, hopefully that's one of the things that the patch fixed because when I was playing, uh, that seemed to not work at all. It's I don't know if it was supposed to be a hard lock-on or if it was just kind of like a soft lock-on kind of thing, but that did not work at all for me, so that was very difficult. And if you have coordination issues or you have... Um, uh, reflex problems where you where you uh, have to be able to uh, 
have trouble moving from target to target very, very quickly, um, you're going to have problems with that. Uh, more than once, I actually was playing and had to either stop playing or it took me sometimes 30 minutes to an hour to beat an area because of the fact that there was no lock-on uh, or um, <clears throat> my reflexes were just simply not fast enough or um, the fact that uh, there's no waypoint system so I frequently got lost and had to backtrack a bunch. Um, and you might say, well, that's not a real big deal. Just read the map. Well, for some people with disabilities, that is a huge deal because uh, some people have trouble uh, with directions. Some people have trouble with um, <clears throat> your reflexes or whatever. So uh, you're going to you're gonna die a lot because you, you move slow. And what negates that sometimes or what helps with that sometimes is the fact that we have a lock-on system or a waypoint system so we can beat the game faster and it's a lot more uh, enjoyable. Uh, whereas uh, the lack of that makes it a chore at times. There were more than once that I actually stopped playing because I got frustrated from being lost or from dying a hundred thousand times and said, I'm done, I'm going to walk away and I'll come back to it. Uh, that that's a, that's a big problem. And as far as difficulty levels, uh, if you are a disabled gamer with reflex issues um, or if you are a disabled gamer that, uh, uh, yeah, basically has reflex levels or levels that are not great, or if you're having problems with uh, button mashing, I, I would recommend that you play on the simplest difficulty level. And that's the story mode difficulty level. Because um, these enemies, as I said, the uh, it starts to um, amp up. The difficulty starts to amp up as you level up your character. And the enemies start getting bigger and more, more difficult. And if you're not on story mode, I can guarantee you... Um, you're going to die a bunch, and you just got to be aware of that. Story mode doesn't take all of the difficulty away from a boss fight, but it does, in fact, make them a little less aggressive uh, and a little slower moving, which does help um, in certain boss fights. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you're going to play this as a disabled gamer, um, that might be something that you consider if you have reflex problems or um, you know dexterity issues with your fingers. For mashing buttons. Um, the lock-on system would have been great if it actually worked for me. It didn't. Uh, some of you guys might not have that problem. Let me know in the comments section below if it worked for you. It did not work for me. Um, so therefore, I was always having to readjust and try to shoot a bow and do different things with some of the challenges or puzzles. And that took me a long time. Uh, so I did get frustrated um, with that. Uh, but other than that, guys, I mean, it's a really great game. Uh, I think it's really a lot of fun. It's an enjoyable game, and it's a unique game. It's something that has not um, been in the market a lot, uh, you know, as far as having this unique aesthetic to it, um, a unique story that kind of grabs you. Uh, again, you have to kind of follow it, you know, follow the cutscenes uh, and and the little clues that they leave you here and there, but. But the story does amp up and does actually start to really take shape. And I think it's enjoyable. If you're a disabled gamer, I would give this... Honestly, I hate to do it, but I have to drop it down to a 7 out of 10. Because there there are problems with, with accessibility for, for a lot of gamers for this. There is a sensitivity function where you can adjust your sensitivity of your camera. Um, but there's no... Uh, and there are subtitles. But as far as... Other options like a colorblind filter, I didn't see that at the time of this recording. Uh, I didn't see anything like that, so those are issues that, that knock the score down. I hope you guys did enjoy this review. Uh, if you've played it, if you're going to play it, let me know in the comment section below. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun game, even though uh, all these issues did eventually have me slow down quite a bit uh, when I was playing. And actually, at some points, stop because of the frustration. But that doesn't take it away take away from it being an enjoyable experience uh, if you can overcome these issues um, by adjusting the difficulty level or something like that. So, um, yeah. So those are my thoughts for Cana Bridge of Spirits uh, for PS, uh, PS4, PS5. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll see you again real soon.
Bye, guys.